and Supnik. I'm one of the X-Plane developers, and in this screencast, I'm going to show you how to use DataRef Editor, a plugin that lets you see and edit DataRefs inside X-Plane. So let's first download DataRef Editor, and then while X-Plane is loading, I'll explain what DataRef is. DataRef Editor is. So we can go to developer.xplane.com, and under the Scenery Tools menu, we go to DataRef Editor. This page has instructions on how to use it. It also has a link to the Xplane plugin SDK website, and there we can download the actual plugin. There we go. We'll unzip the zip file, and here's what we get. A README and a fat plugin, DataRef Editor. You can tell it's a fat plugin because there are three XPL files in there, one for each operating system. So to install our fat plugin, we open our Xplane folder, we go to Resources, Plugins, and we simply drag our fat plugin into the plugins folder. That's all we have to do. So let's start Xplane, and I'll tell you what DataRef Editor is. DataRef Editor is a plugin written by myself and Sandy Barber that lets you view and edit Xplane data refs while you are inside the sim. Data refs are the internal variables of Xplane, and you use them to get data from the sim and to change things inside the sim. Data refs are used by plugins to read what's happening and affect the sim, but they're also used by custom aircraft and by scenery to create animations and working panels. So data refs are important for everybody. So here we are inside Xplane 10.05, inside the King Air. And if we go to the plugins menu, there is now a data ref editor menu. That means data ref editor is installed correctly. And we can simply pick show data refs. This menu item creates a new viewer of data refs. And what you can see here is we have a huge collection of data refs listed alphabetically. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to search, because there are almost 3,000 data refs, and viewing them all is uh, probably not useful. So if you click in this bottom area of the data ref editor window, you can type search terms like engine. This just narrowed down the data refs to only data refs with the word engine in them. Capitalization does matter, and most data refs are lowercase. Uh, you can type more than one word to further filter. So here we have only the data refs that have the word engine and and one inside the data ref. There's only three. Now I can drag on this outer frame to resize my browser. And this data ref uh, editor browser is showing me the value of this data ref in real time. If I click in the middle, I can also reposition it. So I can see Sim Cockpit Engine APU N1. Our APU is apparently running at 100% N1. And our Sim Cockpit 2 Engine Indicators N1 is 0 0.0000002. In other words, the uh, engine is off. So let's do an engine start and watch what happens. I don't need much, I just need my battery. And I need igniters. And now, let's start our engine. As I hold down the starter, you can see that the data ref is increasing. And if you look in the background, you see the prop is starting to spin. In other words, the data ref shows you what is happening inside the flight model as X-Plane runs. And now we introduce the mixture, and our N1 comes up. And we can see it right there. We can see N1 changing. If we look at our panel, the N1 on the panel matches what you see in DataRef Editor. Another thing to know is that sometimes there are two names for a DataRef. Uh, sometimes there's an old and a new name. And what you can see here is that there's actually two names for N1, an older name and a newer one, and they both show the same value. So that's how you view a DataRef, and they update in real time. Viewing DataRefs is a great way to check what unit a data ref is in? Does it show you a percentage or degrees or a ratio? And it's a great way to make sure that the data ref contains the values you would expect when you use your plane. Uh, besides searching for individual words, you can use the pipe 
the vertical bar to search for more than one thing at a time. So I can type engine N1 pipe engine N2, and now I have all of the data rafts that contain engine N1 or engine and N2. And now I can see N1 and N2 at the same time. As you can see, my N2 is a bit higher than my N1. You can create some fairly powerful searches this way. Um, data refs are sometimes arrays and sometimes not. So if we look at APU N1, you'll see that it has a single value, which is going between 99 and 100 as we speak. But the engines, X-Plane supports eight engines, and therefore the engine data refs are all arrays. And we can tell this because you have brackets, and then it says we're looking at zero of eight. So X-Plane supports up to eight engines, and we're looking at engine number zero. One thing to be aware of in data, the data ref world is that data refs always count from zero. So what you thought was the first engine is number zero, the next engine is one, the next engine is two, the next engine is three, etc. So right now we're looking at zero of eight, which means we're looking at the left engine. But if we click on this scroll bar down here, the horizontal one, we click once, now it says you're looking at one of eight. That means we're looking at the right engine. Now, sure enough, the right engine is off, and the data ref is showing zero. And now, if we run the starter for the right engine, there it goes. You can see that the prop is starting to windmill, and the data ref value is coming up. And if I switch my scroll bar back, I can see that the left engine is still showing 59% and 1. So an array data ref contains multiple values, and you use this horizontal scroll bar to view different items in the array. This small scroll bar, by the way, increases by 100. There's a few data refs that have a huge number of items, and this small scroll bar lets you look inside those. Now, so far, so good. We can view our data refs, and we can see what's really happening inside our plane. But data ref editor also lets you change data ref values. So let's zoom in on the panel a little bit and take a look at our battery switch. That's right over here. Now I can type battery, and I can see all the data refs that involve batteries. And we have one here called Sim Cockpit 2 Electrical Battery On, 0 or 1. And if I click on the data ref and type a new value, the data ref changes and the panel changes too. I can click on the panel, or I can type and edit the data ref to make the same change. That's because this is a writable data ref, and you can test whether data ref is writable by just trying values right inside data ref editor. This is a great way to see what you can change on the panel and make sure that you're changing the flight model in the right way. Uh, let me also just show you uh, four features for power users. So, first of all, data ref editor can do tab completion. So if I type sim slash coc and press the tab key, it fills in cockpit. Then if I type two slash ele and press tab, it does electrical. So that's a fast way to get things typed quickly. Uh, here's another thing you can do with data ref editor. I'm going to go to data ref editor show art controls. Art controls are kind of like secret data refs that we use internally to develop X-Plane. So for example, and you can search just like any other, I'm going to go to a data ref called perf kill planes, and this is an art control. When I set it to 1, my airplane disappears. So an example of how you might use this kind of thing is I can go to data in input and output, turn on my frame rate, and I can see that I'm running at about 30 FIPS. Then I get rid of my airplane, and I shoot up to 40 FIPS. And so I can estimate how much frame rate my airplane is costing. Uh, most art controls are undocumented, but in some of the other screencasts, I'll show you a few of the ones you can use to uh, analyze your own add-ons. The important thing is that the art controls are in their own browser and not in the main browser. Uh, if you want to see your own data refs from your own plugin, uh, you can make data refs show your data refs. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that in that screencast, 
but uh, there's documentation on the X-Plane SDK website that explains exactly how to do that. And a lot of add-ons take advantage of this because Data Ref Editor makes it very easy to debug your work. So one last trick. I'm going to create my Engine N1, Engine N2 screen again. So this is a useful set of filters where I can look at my engines. I'm going to resize it so it's just the way I want it. And now I'm going to turn it into a preset. Here's how I do it. I'm going to quit X-Plane while the window is still open. Now, DataRef Editor has preferences, and if I restart X-Plane, that window will appear exactly where we saw it. But I can also go to the Output folder, and I can go to Preferences, and find DataRefEditor.dre. That is DataRef Editor's presets file. Now I'm going to make a new folder in X-Plane's Preferences folder called DRE Presets. And I'm going to rename DataRef Editor DRE to a descriptive name like Engine N1 and 2dre And I'm going to drag that into DRE Presets. What I've done is I've created a new preset based on what we left showing in the sim. So let's go back and restart Explain. This is a very powerful way to work. If you're making your own add-on and you often use the same filter to view a common set of data refs, this is a great way to have a preset so that you don't have to retype that filter over and over again. So, okay, so explain loaded, and now when I go to Plugins, Data Ref Editor, I have a new menu item, Engine N1 N2. And when I pick it, sure enough, my data ref browser with N1 and N2 appears exactly where it was before in the same part of the screen with the same filters. And I can close it, and I can always get it back from the presets. And you can make as many presets as you want so that you always have your favorite data refs right at your tip. That's Data Ref Editor. Uh, thanks for watching.